From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of Astounding Science Fiction, presents... X minus one... Tonight's story, To the Future, by Ray Bradbury. Time is an interesting phenomenon. A ticking clock, the running sands of an hourglass. All these have captured the imagination of men. But time is more. It exists now, and then, and in the future. Suppose we are in the year 1955. Coexistent in time may be worlds we have never seen. The worlds of the past and of the future. The year 1955. It was a spring night in Mexico. Fiesta time. The fireworks shot up into the clear dark sky and a paper mache bull ran about the plaza chasing boys and laughing men. Mr. and Mrs. William Travis stood on the edge of the yelling crowd, smiling. Bravo, Bravo! What is it? What do they say? They're cheering for the bull. Here he comes. He's good, isn't he? Look how they rig that fire breathing. Oh, Bill, it's wonderful. I've never enjoyed myself so much in my life. <laughs> it's terrific. They caught the bull. Bravo, Toro! Bill... Phil, it will go on, won't it? Yeah. I mean, our trip. Sue, don't worry. I've got enough traveler's checks for a lifetime. Relax. Oh, no, but suppose they find oh, forget us. Forget it. They haven't a chance. But suppose they do. Suppose they take us back. They'll never find us. Oh, relax. Enjoy yourself. If it only lasts. Come on. Let's get out of the crowd, hmm? You need a drink. Let's try something different this time. Mm-hmm. I want to try every drink there is in the world. <laughs> don't worry. There's no rush. We've got plenty of time now. In here. There's a table over there. Come on. Bill. Don't. Don't look right away. Over your left shoulder, right by the end of the bar. That man. What is it? I saw him this morning in the plaza. Take it easy. The town's full of tourists. He was at Juarez and at Tasco. Bill, I'm afraid. Don't stare at him. Come on. I know it's the same man. He was wearing the same white suit. Sit down, Sue. Come on, dear. Smile. Act natural. Billy's been following us. He's a searcher. I know he is. Quiet. Uh, here, boy. Uh, si, senor. Uh, Benedictine and brandy, too. Uh, si. Uh, si, senor. He's been watching us, Bill. Put yourself together, Susan. They can't take us back. Will you quit worrying? The chances are one in a thousand that they found us. It's probably just a coincidence. I want to lie down. I think I'm going to be oh, sick. Susan, hang on, will you? If he is looking for us, we can't run out. It'd attract attention. He must have slipped up when we checked out in New York. What's he doing now? Stopped our waiter. He's asking him something. Well, he may just want a drink. Bill, I can't stand it. I've got to go upstairs and lie down. All right, all right. As soon as we finish our drinks. What's he doing now? He... He's nodding at me. As if he knows me. He's smiling. Bill, he's coming over here. Watch yourself. We've got to go right on in front of him, so if he is what we think he is, he won't suspect. I can't. We've got to. Come on. And so I said to David, what, well, that's absolutely ridiculous. What, what Mr. You... Christian, you did not pull up your pants leg when you sat down. What? I'm afraid you've got the wrong person. My name isn't uh, Chrysler. Kristen. Oh. I'm uh, William Travis. I don't see what my pants leg has to do with it. <laughs> Mind if I sit down? See... Everyone nowadays pulls up his pants leg when he sits down. Like this. See, it keeps the trouser from bagging at the knees. But of course, if you're not used to this style of clothing... Now, see here, we don't know you. You don't? I'm sorry. I thought I knew you. This is our table, if you don't mind. You see, I'm looking for two friends of mine. A man and his wife. Very much like you. The man is an atomic scientist. The wife, a bacteriologist. Very important people. They work on government business. What are you talking about? 
And when I find my friends, I'm going to take them home with me. Uh, look here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sims. That will do for now. Well, look, I understand you thought you knew us, but you see you're mistaken. Now, if you'll excuse us, my wife and I were just going up to our room. We have to make an early start in the morning. Oh, going for a trip? Acapulco, perhaps? Oh, a lovely spot. Never mind where we're going. Yes, yes, of course. You don't like crowds, tourists. Probably like to get off the beaten path. You know, I have a vacation folder here that might interest you. Please, Bill, let's go. It's, uh, it's put out by an outfit that calls itself Travel in Time, Incorporated. Travel in Time? Yes. They've come up with a rather intriguing idea. Here. Travel in Time, Incorporated, can costume you, put you in the crowd at any place and time in history. We guarantee to teach you any language you need to move freely in any year without risk of detection. This summer, why not escape from the worries of our modern world? Take your vacation in time. <laughs> That's impossible, of course. Ah, but think what it would mean. A chance to escape all the tensions of an unpleasant life, war, insecurity, fear... Suppose you were a scientist working on a dangerous bomb project. Or you, Mrs. Travis. Suppose you were a bacteriologist working on disease cultures and you had a chance to escape all that, to take a vacation 200 years in the past. It would be wonderful, wouldn't it, to escape to a more peaceful world? A trip back to 1955? 1955? But you said a vacation in the past. So I did. But you see... 1955 is the past. If you come from the year 2155. 2155? Yes. Terrible times. Most unpleasant. A war raging. An atomic, bacteriological war. Terrible times. With none of the little comforts we enjoy today. Like this fine Havana cigar. Well, I want to go upstairs. I want to lie down. If you were living then... Think of how wonderful it would be to take a vacation in time. Back to now. Suppose a young couple, like yourselves, took a trip to 1955 and didn't want to come back. Do you know what would happen? The government sends a searcher back to look for them. This is all fantastic The nonsense. searcher finds them and brings them back. Back to that miserable, insane, stark, pleasureless world of 2155. A pity, isn't it? Look here, Sims. Well, is... uh, do you think I shall find my two friends, Mr. Travis? Bill, please take me upstairs. I don't feel well. Oh, is the lady feeling a bit ill? How unfortunate. Here are the drinks, senor. Ah. Well, shall we drink a toast? To 2155. To the future. Inside, quick. What are you doing? Shoving a chair under the doorknob. He knows. He's been following us. He's a searcher. Look, keep quiet, Sue. I, I want to think. They're going to take us back. It isn't over yet. I've got a headache. I'll, I'll get you an aspirin. What will they do to us? I don't know. Something slipped. Something must have slipped. But we were so careful. The searchers are trained to watch for detail. Things like not pulling up my trousers. It started them thinking, there's a man who isn't used to ancient clothes. I could kill myself for giving it away. No. No, it was my walk with these high heels. Here. Thanks. The nerve of that Sim sitting there looking us up and down like animals. Smoking those stinking cigarettes. Yeah, you know, that's how I first noticed him at Tesco. He had four bottles of liqueurs and a pile of chocolate. Yes, he still hasn't gotten over that first greedy hunger. But we've got to look out for that. It's the sure sign of somebody from the future. Trying to make up for a lifetime of shortages by stuffing yourself sick. Remember our first night? Bill, I can't stand it. We've got to get out of here. What are you doing? Packing. Put the suitcases up. But it's no use. What do you mean? We can get to Acapulco by morning. Don't you think he's watching us? We could get away. No, no. no. You've got to sit tight. Maybe he isn't sure of us yet. Maybe we can still figure out some way to escape. Come on now. We'll need our strength. We'd better try to get some sleep. 
Go back. Security pull it. The bomb. The bomb. It's falling and killing. Sue. Sue, what's the matter? No. Sue. No. Sue, wake up. Wake up, Sue. Bill, Sue. Bill, Bill, where are we? It's all right, all right, all right. Calm down, honey. We're still in 1955. It's all right. Oh. You must have had a nightmare. Oh, Bill, it was awful. We were back there. 2155. Bill, we won't go back there, will we, ever? Go back Tell to sleep, me. honey. It's all right. We're in Mexico, 1955, and we're going to stay here. Sue, I've been lying awake here thinking. He's still testing us. He's not absolutely certain. He's got all the time in the world. He can stay here as long as he likes. And then bring us back to the future 60 seconds after we left it. But they can't make a scene, can they? They don't dare come out in the open. No, no. It might change the future. They're afraid of that. Bill, if we could only tell somebody, ask for you help. No, we can't. That's why we had to submit to the psychological block treatment before they okayed our vacation. We couldn't tell if we tried. The block's too strong. Maybe we can break it, oh, Bill. What's the use, darling? Who'd believe a crazy story like ours? Who'd believe we come from 2155? No, we, we can't tell. And they'll have to get us a loan to put us in the time machine to send us back. Then that's it, Bill. We'll never be alone. It's still siesta tomorrow. It'll be easy to stay in the crowd. Yes. Yes, that's the only chance. We can't let him get us alone. He won't get us back to that war and that insane world. Bill. Well, could be the room clerk. At three in the morning? I'd better answer. Don't, Bill, don't. I've got to. Hello? Hello? Mr. Travis? What's the idea? It's three in the morning. Yes, yes. I just wanted to remind you, the rabbits may hide in the forest, but a fox can always find them. <laughs> what was it, Bill? Bill... Never mind. Come on. Let's get some sleep while we can. Buenos dias, senor y senora. Good morning, senor Gomez. I trust you are spending pleasant days in my hotel. Fiesta time is the best. Yes, it's been lovely. Your special table is all ready for breakfast. Blazers in the hotel. You, Buster, where's the hotel in this godforsaken sinkhole of a one horse town? All the blighted deserts of the whole second country. So I had some the the Oh, I great the excitement. Very great. What is it? They come with four trucks and innumerable automobiles. Huh? A, a motion picture company from Hollywood. Oh, what are they doing down here? They where's, make the pictures the of our fiesta for the where's background. The manager, huh? That the fat man, uh, the one with the most oh, colorful yeah, shirt, uh, he is the right. chief. Uh, manager! Uh, director. Manager! Where's the manager of this Adobe Fleabag? Uh, coming, senor. <laughs> you will excuse me, senor, senor. I, I, I hope the table is satisfactory. Uh, coming, uh, coming, senor. This is a break, so that, that movie company will draw crowds, and that helps us. But when can we leave, Bill? Oh, not today. He'd be... Okay, kids, end of the line. Ciao. Get it up, Maxwell, and lay off the pepper. I got an out, sir. Bill, there's Sims across the dining room. I can't do anything now, not with these actors coming in. Gloria, you sit next to Papa. Hello. Max, make sure nobody monkeys with the trucks and the gear. Right, Chief. Do we have to eat at this crummy joint, Joe? Uh, cheer up, sweetie. Your mere presence makes this chasens and truck roll into one. Oh, no, not this early in the morning, <laughs> Joe. I couldn't stand it. Okay, okay. Anything you want, laddies. It's on the dear old expense account. They look happy, don't they? There's an idea. Maybe I could hire two of them. I could say it was a joke. Why? We could dress him in our clothes, have him drive off in our car sometime when Sims couldn't see their faces. Where would that get us? With him off on their trail, we might make it to Mexico City. It'd take years to find us there. Wait, that movie man's coming over. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, you folks are Americans, aren't you? That's right. Boy, am I glad to see you. I'm so sick of hearing Spanish, I could kiss you. <laughs> hey, come on over and eat with us, huh? Well, I, uh, 
I don't think we should intrude. Ah, oh, come on, come on. Misery loves company. I'm Misery, and that's the company. <laughs> We're from Hollywood. Uh, so I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, would I like to be there. Oh, oh, I, I'm Joe Melton. I'm the director. Uh, I'm uh, William Travis. This is my wife, Susan. Mutual. <laughs> uh, come on over, kids. Join the party. Cheer us up. Only no tamales. I burned out three kidneys on tamales since I came over the border. <laughs> ah, boy, am I funny, huh? Wonderful. Well, come on over. Hey, kiddies, I got new blood. Brother Yank. Just a moment, Mr. Travis. I thought you might be breakfasting with me alone. Sorry. <laughs> I got him first, Mac. You want to join us? No, no, I've already ordered. Mr. Travis... I think you'd better talk with me. Say, now. is this guy giving you trouble? No, it's, uh, it's all right. Then I say the word and I'll have Max pitch him out in his ear. No, no, it's, it's all right. We'll be right over, Mr. Melton. Yeah. Hey, we'll talk to Mr. Sims. Uh, Mr. Melton, you sort of keep an eye on us, huh? After all, you found us first. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, come on over soon, kids. <laughs> uh, sit down, Mr. <laughs> Travis. I hope you slept well. Did you? Well, I'm not used to spring mattresses, but there are compensations. I stayed up half the night trying new cigarettes and foods. A whole new spectrum of sensation, these ancient vices. We miss something in our world, don't we? And when we get back here, we try to cram it all in a few short days. We don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Still acting, eh? But it's no use. You can't stay in crowds all the time. I'll get you alone soon enough. I'm immensely patient. However, let's come to the point. You know we can't let you get away with this escape. Other people in the year 2155 might get the same idea and do the same thing. And we need people to fight your wars. Bill. It's all right, Susan. We can talk on his terms now. He's got us. We, we can't escape. Oh, at last. Really, you know, you've been incredibly romantic, running away from your responsibilities. Running away from horror. Oh, nonsense. Only a war. Only? With half the world dead and the other half dying? Yes, but we can't have you escaping here while we drop off a cliff. Dying people love to know that others died with hey, them. Hey, kids, break it up. We're waiting on you. The longer you keep me waiting, the harder it will go on you. What do you mean? We need you on that bomb project. Return now, and no torture. Torture? Yes. You see, later we'll force you to work. And after you finish the bomb, we'll try a number of complicated new devices on you. Yeah. As you say, you can't escape. We have all the time in the world here. Sims, I'll make a deal with you. I'll come back now. If my wife stays here alive, safe, away from that war. No, Bill, Keep not... quiet, Sue. Well, Sims, you need me for that bomb. You can duplicate her work. Hmm... It exceeds my authority, but, uh, all right. Meet me in the plaza in ten minutes. All right. I'll pick you up in the car. Good. We'll drive out into the country to some deserted spot, and I'll have the time travel machine pick us up. Bill, I won't let you. Don't argue, dear. It's settled. Sims, there's one thing. Yes? Last night, instead of calling, you could have broken into our room and got us. Why didn't you? <laughs> Uh, shall we say that I was enjoying myself? Take this new fine cigar, for example. <sighs> wonderful. Wonderful. Do you know that I have 12 boxes up in my room? And liqueurs, creme de menthe, benedictine, creme de coca, and so many others, and the wine. Oh, I've got the closets full of them. <laughs> and I shall so hate to leave it all. Well... I'll meet you in the plaza in ten minutes. Your wife may stay here as long as she wishes. All right, Sims, it's a deal. Mm. Uh, don't try anything now, Travis. I know when I'm beat. We just want a few minutes to say goodbye. I shall be seeing you then. Well, I won't let you do it. I won't let you. Oh, please, I'm going Susan. to tell the truth. I'm going to get help. You can't. The psychological... We've got to it. try. It's our last chance. Hey, hey, aren't you two going to join us? I, I Mr. Thought... Melton, I've got something to tell uh, you, and you've got to believe me. Work, I've got to try. Now, go ahead, kids. Fill it. You've got to understand. You see, we really... Bill. Mm -hmm. Bill, my head. Huh? I can't think. My head. Say, you need a bromo, honey. That <laughs> works, Sue. The block's too strong. we better get the car. Bill. Bill, please. Uh, 
Uh, someone's crying. <laughs> Somebody, please. Uh, breakfast, no time for people to cry. <laughs> now, what in the world could a good-looking kid like you find to cry about? <laughs> Let you do it. Don't make it hard, Susan. Let me go back with you. We'll get through some way. You think I'd let you go back to that war? Sue, please stop. We haven't got much time. But it was so wonderful here, Bill. <laughs> there he is, smoking those Turkish cigarettes, waiting for us. There must be some way, some way we can both stay here. Maybe there is. Bill, what are you going to do? Hang on, Sue, and duck when I tell no, you. No, Bill, you're heading right for him. He's not going to get either of us now. Down, Sue, down. <laughs> Darling, it's all right. Oh. It's all over. Darling, this is the mayor. Uh, Senor, your husband has been officially cleared in this most unfortunate affair. It is obvious this senor seems died of an unavoidable accident. An accident? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Adios, senor, senora. Will they want to see you again? No. No, I'm clear. Oh. I lost control of the car. That's the way it stands. Sue, I hated to kill him. I've never wanted to do anything like that in my life. Where shall we go now? Mexico City? Yeah. Cars in the repair shop. Won't be ready till four. And we'll get out. Hey there, Travis. Wait up. Oh, it's that movie man, Bill. He was very good to me when they had you in there. Hey, I heard what happened. They sprung you, huh? Great, great. Yes, it was an accident. Well, lucky you didn't get hurt yourselves. Everything okay now? Yes. Yes, I think so. Ah, it's fine, fine. But you both look a little rocky. Say, say, you want to get your mind off your troubles. Uh, we're through for the day. Clouds fouled up our shooting schedule. We're going to put a header on it up at the hotel. Gloria's cracking the ice now. Well, maybe we will join you. But first, I've got to check up on the car. Well, don't miss the party, kiddies. See you upstairs. Bill, I don't think... Relax, we... honey. We've got the break now. Sims is dead. Before they can put another searcher on our trail, we'll have time to make a clean getaway. How about the car? We won't be ready till four. We've got a couple of hours to kill. I'm so tired. What you need is a little excitement. We rate a celebration, honey. Well, I guess it would be nice to unwind. Sure. We'll go up to Melton's room, have a couple of drinks, a few laughs. Don't worry, honey. It's all over. We can relax. Great, great. Call me Joe. Gloria, you get to the court. We got company. Oh, ahead of you. Here you are, kid. Uh, you kids ready to drink. Yeah, that was a pretty messy business, but it's all over now, huh? Yes, it's all over. Uh, time to unlax. Grab a glass, honey. Thank you. Hey, hey, quiet, everybody. Quiet, quiet. How about a toast to our guests? Well, sure. Yeah, come on, huh? Okay. All right. To a very beautiful lady, lovely enough for the movie. Ooh, thank you. Oh, I'm not kidding. That's why I came over to you in the first place. I might even give you a test. <laughs> oh, I mean it, honey. You're pretty nice. I could make you a movie star. Uh, and take me to Hollywood? Uh, at least it'd get us out of Mexico. <laughs> You're not serious. Well, sure I am. Gloria, how about a refill? Yeah, coming up. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it, Bill? Uh, um, Los Angeles is a, is a pretty crowded city, isn't crowded. it? Crowded? Hey, hey, wait till you see the sunset buzz. Well, you don't really think I could be an actress, do you? Mm. <laughs> you don't have to cheer me up anymore. I'm feeling wonderful no, now. No, no, I'm serious. Really? Well, what kind of a film do you think my wife would be good for? Well, I want to do a suspense story. Uh, sort of a war story, you know. Uh, Gloria, pour Mr. Travis another glass. A story okay. about a man and a wife. Uh, you live in a little house. I'm just ad-libbing this, you understand? Well, sure, sure. Go on. Uh, there's a war on, see? A terrible war, you see? And they live in the year, oh, uh, 2155. Yeah. Now, here's the gimmick. Uh, they escape into the past, and they kill a man who follows them to bring them back. Uh, Gloria Honeypot, uh, get Mr. Travis another glass. He dropped his. Well, sir, uh, this couple takes refuge with a group of movie people. Uh, safety in numbers, they figure. Yeah. Ah, but the story goes on. Uh, this couple is uh, uh, terribly important for a new bomb. 
Let's call it the leprosy bomb. So the searchers figure out a way that they can get them alone in the hotel room. Shove a chair under the door now, Max. Yes, sir. You see, the searchers may work alone or in groups of eight so that if one of them's killed, the rest carry on. Don't you think that'd make a wonderful picture, huh, Susan? Uh, don't you, Bill? Get up when you get us, Milton. <laughs> Stand still. Look out! Put that gun down, Travis. Mr. Travis. Mr. Travis. Who is it? Uh, the manager. Your car is all ready. Shall I... Grab him! Let, let go of me. Let go! Let's not make things worse, Mr. Travis. <laughs> The manager, you heard the shots. Let's get going. Let go of me. Let me in there. Let me in. He'll break down the door in a minute. Max, get ready to travel. Get the chair. Take a good look, Mr. Travis. Take a good look at 1955. You won't be seeing it anymore. Bill! Throw the Bill! chair! Bill! All right. Break it down. Who shot that? Where are they? I was at the door. I heard them inside. Oh, they're gone. The windows. No. The iron bars are undisturbed. Well, what happened to them? They, they, they just disappeared, all of them. Senor, I think you had better send for the priest in the holy water. Later, later. They, they just disappeared. Look in the closet. Bottles. Hundreds of bottles. And, and boxes of 20 pesos, pure Havana, fewer cigars. These crazy Americanos. Why would anyone leave all this behind what? them? Never question providence. Ah, bien. There is enough here to last us both for a month. Ah, I think we can look forward to a most happy future. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith. Publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you To the Future by Ray Bradbury. It was adapted for radio by Ernest Kinoy. Featured in the cast were Terry Keene, Alexander Scorby, Mercer McLeod, Joe DeSantis, Guy Sorrell, Alan Collins, and Stan Early. This is Fred Collins speaking. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. Next week on X-1, Ray Bradbury's story, Marionettes Incorporated. It's groomed for your interests. Weekdays, NBC Radio. Mm -hmm.